what I'm going to do is actually, I know that there's some features that I use with, uh, especially with newsletters, and I go back to them again and again. And I want to create a toolbar specifically for you know, the, the menu items that I, that I want to have uh, easy access to. Under the Tools menu, again, a lot of the good things uh, that you want to be able to play with or work with to customize or to make WordPerfect do what you want can be found in the Tools menu. So it's one place that if you're not sure where to go, I tend to gravitate toward the Tool menu to kind of find some of those uh, features that, uh, that I want to use again and again or ways to customize the application. So in this case, at the very bottom, under Settings, we actually can, uh, this is where we can modify so many things about WordPerfect, the where the files are backed up, the type of environment or workspace that we're working with, the application bar is one that we access just by right-clicking on the status bar at the bottom. But what I want to do is go to Customize. So I want to customize uh, WordPerfect settings. So you'll notice that I have a number of options, and, and this may be something that you've, you've used before. Um, and if not, please don't be intimidated by it because there are uh, some quick ways to kind of reset no matter what you do, if you mess something up and you're concerned that, that you've ruined it or you've ruined a toolbar, notice that there is a reset option. So if you're ever concerned that you've modified something and you can't, the toolbar doesn't look the same anymore, uh, opening up the settings to customize and choosing reset will bring you back to the factory defaults. What I want to do is I'm actually going to create a new toolbar. Uh, and I didn't already, so that's perfect. So I'm going to, instead of editing an existing toolbar, so for instance, this standard one at the top where we have uh, new, open, and file, I can choose to modify that. But I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to create my news letter toolbar. Okay, so I'm going to create that. And you'll notice that it's actually added a blank bar just below my standard toolbar. So it's added something in for me. And uh, a couple of things that I use uh, quite a bit, actually, and I believe it is, I want to find format. I believe it's in format. So what I've done is I actually just hit, I know it's called make it fit. So I just hit the M key, and it went to the first, uh, first option that started with the letter M. And make it fit. Make it fit has saved me so many times. I absolutely adore it. And I'm going to show you how it works in just a moment. So I can now add that button. And you'll notice that it's put a button on this new blank toolbar. It's no longer blank. Uh, a couple things that I know I'm going to do quite often is I'm actually going to create, let's see, I'm going to new from project. New from project. There it is. Uh, notice that I can choose to add the button. But if I click and drag, and I'm just holding my mouse button down, clicking and dragging, you'll see that I have a little plus sign now, and that button is on my cursor. So I can position tools exactly where I want. While I have this toolbar editor open, you'll notice that I can also drag and reposition tools as I need to. If I want to add a, a little separator to kind of group my tools together, I can click and drag, and you'll notice that it now adds a little separator bar, which will appear as, as one of these little... Um, horizontal lines when I close the editor. So there's a couple of little ones. Let's, uh, let's leave that for now. Um, but I believe, nope, does double checking. Nope, we're good. I've added that. Let's just have two tools for now. I can, while I'm here, also uh, type in shortcut keys that will activate a particular, a particular tool. Uh, I can also add programs to this uh, this toolbar. I can also add macros or or automated options to my toolbar, so I can access them very easily. So let's say OK. I'm done editing. I'm going to close the editor, and you'll notice that my newsletter toolbar has now been checked. And if I wanted to turn them on or off, I can also access them by right clicking. Oh, let me close that for a second. Right clicking my toolbar, you'll notice that my newsletter option is now there, so I could toggle it on or off if I need to. Go back to Customize Settings. Now, I just did a shortcut as well. Instead of going to the Tool menu and going to uh, Customize or Settings and then Customize, and close that, I right-clicked on the uh, toolbar, and I have an option to go directly to Settings that will affect my, my toolbar or my, my interface. So I've uh, created a new toolbar. I can come in and actually uh, add things to my, to my uh, various property bars. So right now I'm seeing a text property bar. 
I can customize other ones as well or I can add additional tools to them. Again, if you ever feel like you've made a mistake or you want to go back to the way that toolbar was, you can always choose the reset option. Uh, with menus as well, I can actually add uh, my own menu. So in my WordPerfect menu, which is essentially what you're seeing here, so file, edit, view, insert, all of the, the options that are available in those menus will be under the WordPerfect menu. I can choose to edit. Now by editing it, what I can do is start, you'll notice that the color here has changed and it's turned to a white. What I can do is say add items to my menu. So for instance, I use, uh, I like having a close all button because I, especially when I'm working, I tend to have multiple documents open. So I can choose close all and I can add menu item. It actually adds it as its own option at the very top, but I should be able to also drag and drop and position it wherever I want. So in under close, I want to include close all. Okay, so just additional ways to modify menus, uh, give yourself access to tools more conveniently, the ones that you use more often uh, as well. So same kind of features, you can add keystrokes and programs to different menus and, and have automated macros. It's just really giving you options for ways that you'd want to access some of the tools that are available. Okay, and again, if you're worried, you can always reset back to the default. Okay, so I have my close all option right here and under the file menu, close all. And it's also showing me the shortcut key that I can use as well. Okay, um, speaking of shortcut keys, this is going to be one of my, uh, one of my last tips before I kind of answer any questions that, that may have come up. If I come up to the tool menu, I'm going to go back to settings. And settings is a place I, I sometimes go fairly often just to tweak things as I need to or really just kind of try and speed things up as I work. Um, under keyboards, so I've played with toolbars, property bars, uh, we can actually modify and add tools to menus. You've seen I've, I've added a tool to the file menu or an option. Under keyboard, you can modify the shortcuts that are available. So you can create your own if you want, but let's edit the existing one. What this does, it brings up the window of all the shortcut keys that are being used and all the ones that are available to use. So in the uh, on the left hand side what you're seeing is in essentially kind of like I don't want to say alphabet almost like an alphabetical order really by shortcut key of all the ones that are available and what what feature may be already assigned to it and you'll see that anything that has a blank next to it is a shortcut key that's available for you to make use of so if I scroll down sometimes they get fairly long because we try and use and, and make as many shortcut keys available for you as we can if I come up to I'm not going to remember this if I do it. Let's say, all right, doesn't mean I have to use it, right? Okay, so for the sake of this demo, <laughs> let's say F2, Control, and Shift. If I want to assign perhaps that Close All as a shortcut, I can choose Close All, and I can assign that feature to the key that I have selected. So let me, and it also fortunately tells you what that feature is in case you're not sure, Assign. Okay, and now that shortcut key will be the one I use for close all. If though you find that you want to say replace something, so let's say F2 is find and replace. Say I want to assign uh, close to that. If I try to assign that feature, allow assignment on character keys, I want to make sure that I don't have any errors. Control A. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, it'll actually update anything that we have already assigned as a shortcut key. It'll allow you to change that. Uh, if you want to find one as well, so I'm in this list. I, I really like to find a shortcut key that I'd like to use fairly often. I'm going to choose uh, Control Z or Control Z because I know I'm going to find that one. As I type in that shortcut key, it zips down to that area. It shows me what's already been uh, assigned to it, and then if I want to change that, I can. Here's the best bit, which you may already have seen. You can export these to a file, so you can actually print out all the shortcut keys that are available, or you can print out a report. So you can export to a file, or you can print a report. This report will be ridiculously long, so I'm not going to do that. But if I export to a file, it allows me to save it as a CSV file or a common, comma delimited file, which basically will let you import it into a spreadsheet and modify as you choose. So if there's maybe 
10, 20 shortcut keys that you want to have uh, printed out at your desk or that you want perhaps someone that's new to the organization uh, take advantage of, make it a little easier for them, then that's a really great feature as well.